let's get this. Hello and good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, wherever you are. This is the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ. Uh, we're here today with another incredible bamboo guest for the Bamboo podcast. We will be talking about bamboo. And um, yeah, um, don't forget to subscribe and like on the YouTube channel or wherever you're uh, looking the Bamboo podcast. And um, welcome Vince Math to the Think Bamboo podcast. Thank you. Thanks, JJ. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, looking forward to talking to, talking some bamboo. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's talk bamboo. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so Vince, you have um, you have been doing some some pretty cool stuff, building some pretty cool bamboo buildings, um, and um, uh, you have a very interesting journey which started maybe I'm not sure if it started, but in Indonesia. So I don't know if you want to give a intro what you did there, how you 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 uh, came into that world because I mean, how many bamboo builders are there? <laughs> not a lot. Well there are a lot more than when I started. Um, okay. I've been, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a carpenter. Um, I was born and raised in Germany, did my apprenticeship system in Germany and, uh, was very fortunate to have a good, you know, craftsman education here in, uh, in Europe and stumbled upon bamboo by sort of luck and, uh, with the right people in my life. Uh, they uh, opened these doors to uh, exploring my journey with bamboo. Um, obviously, I'll I'll mention those names just because I like to give those people the credit. Um, Felix Buck, he's actually known to do um, some fun stuff with bamboo as well. He does uh, chop value. He he makes chopsticks into boards and and now furnitures and and all sort of stuff. So definitely cool. check him out. Um, and then my mentor, Jörg Stamm, he's kind of known in the industry for building amazing, incredible structures. So Absolutely. he was the one who really guided me the first few years in, in my bamboo journey, um, which actually started in Ethiopia, Africa. Um, and then I transitioned into the Indonesian market. I um, was hired by Ibuku and was part of their furniture team from my from my background. Uh, and then transitioned into doing a whole bunch of other things, including structures and training and um, different types of workshops. And over the years, I've established a bamboo consultancy that now focuses on helping people build with bamboo. Um, and it's it's really an international thing. I'm, I'm not specifically just in one area. It's, it's kind of all around the globe, mostly where there is bamboo. Um, and it kind of ranges from A to C, helping people understand, first of all, you know, what you can do with bamboo, how to obviously design with it. Yeah. And then it goes through the, the whole process of sourcing the bamboo, treating it, um, doing a lot of workshops. So teaching people how to actually work with bamboo, using the tools, using the, the knowledge, using that thinking uh, on how to construct with bamboo. And then obviously it goes all the way down to finishing the build and, um, and, and, and and do you already have own uh, like uh, younger generations uh, learning from you too, or is this like the next next step, uh, like your own apprenticeships? I, I I mean, there's still a way to go to really call it an apprenticeship system, since bamboo is just it's a very extensive knowledge you have to first of all acquire, but also understand, since every bamboo is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So there is an area specific knowledge that you do want to gain, um, and I can call myself very fortunate. Having being being able to travel for work and traveling into different areas and uh, you know working with different cultures, different bamboo, obviously different climates, uh, and kind of learning from that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we are. I mean, there are more and more courses uh, that are teaching a good amount of knowledge with bamboo. The bamboo U workshop is part of that. I'm I'm part of the bamboo U community so that that is always exciting to see how many people are excited to do more stuff with bamboo um i wouldn't say there's a younger generation yet since <laughs> i'm still fairly young i guess but um it's nice for me to see that much excitement in bamboo construction um i mean there are more and more builders now there are more and more companies that actually build with bamboo more kind of locally so they build where they are where they're from or where they have their team or the not the bamboo they know less mm -hmm. so people that kind of 
travel and, and help people do stuff, but it's all kind of a sharing community. So wherever you go and do stuff with bamboo, you will learn stuff and that can be applied to mostly your bamboo or whatever you're planning to do. So I highly encourage people to, you know, look at other bamboo stuff, um, learn from especially the locals, the people that have been building with bamboo, even sometimes for centuries and it's been mm -hmm. passed down. Um, that is, that's always been a huge learning curve for me, kind of learning traditional um, methods and then maybe combining those with more modern approaches, um, which some of my projects kind of reflect, like we, it's always a dynamic combination of the both. Um, yeah. That's that's how we got to know each other with uh, while you were uh, doing the workshop in uh, in Germany, and I noticed you were using um, very cool the ancestral method of joining bamboo with uh, bamboo, <laughs> right? Joining Correct. bamboo with bamboo. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I mean, th there's a lot of different um, joinery methods, and, and you know, it, it really depends on obviously what you're building, how many stories, what Absolutely. applications, what area. Yeah. But some of the indigenous techniques of tying bamboo with bamboo or even pinning it or um, lashing obviously has been around for a long period of time. And that that works so well and it, it lasts a lot longer than some of these modern techniques because it's just been proven to work. So that that's always, I mean, it, it depends on the project. It really, that is kind of the underlying message. <laughs> like everything, right? I mean, like everything. But uh, that's cool. I mean, that's really cool. Because um, yeah, it's I mean there is there are so many options, and most people who start with bamboo don't know about all the options out there at the beginning. So uh, it's cool to see that uh, you're using a lot of options. <laughs> and uh, well, I I try to. I mean that toolbox yeah. of of knowledge is constantly growing. There mm -hmm. is the term of being an expert with bamboo. To me, is it, it it's it's a term that's it's not really fair there is no expert i mean there's an expert in that field of bamboo that you're using but an expert of in the entire bamboo family is you have to really know a lot and there's a lot of species that you can use for construction or you could do smaller stuff with it and you know every bamboo is a little different there's always a constant learning curve um so it's good to kind of keep an open mind about this and not not be pressured into having to learn something so specific since there's a lot of variables as well uh, and that's what i enjoy about this this work with bamboo Absolutely. it's not this it's not this square kind of always perfectly you know planed and, and prepared material that you work with which obviously has its attraction too i mean I, I i love woodwork and i still do it um i still run a small furniture shop in new york but it look it, it it's just two different worlds it's a little bit of a different thinking the mm -hmm. tooling is similar, but the the thinking of working with a round material has, to me, it's a it's an excitement because there's always a challenge, and it's it's not as straightforward as it is with a lot of rather squared materials. Um, so to me, that's exciting. For some architects and designers, it's a total nightmare because it's obviously <laughs> very that's different. That's a good point. That's a good but point. <laughs> for me, as a craftsman, it's it's yeah. kind of that that challenge of how how do I make this work with a material I have not seen before potentially i mean there's certain bamboo that it tapers differently it has the no differences very it varies so that every pole is 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 in it's individual it's it's a unique piece so you 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 make it work in a way it's almost like building a log cabin but with a hollow material so it's just and difficult this, it's... the surprise moment when you see the the bamboo the first time and 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 you have uh, the project and and then you have to choose how to how to proceed probably <laughs> exactly exactly cool. there's always there's a constant there's a constant working uh effort in my head where it's like and it's kind of a it's obviously there's experience that goes into it but then there's also just a good amount of understanding of the material and i think that's in, if you ever join a workshop um that i teach the underlying message is really get to know the material because with that you'll ultimately be able to do a lot more than if you do research online and you see all these structures that will give you some idea, but it's never going to give you the same feedback as working with the material, understanding its kind of characteristics and, you know, how to use it and the tools, obviously, um, even just the, the way you think about using that material. So you'll, you'll see me reference that a lot and kind of everywhere. <laughs> cool. Cool. No, that's, I mean, that's the way you, you can learn most by doing it. Right. 
instead of just talking. But talking right now is important because we're helping people to understand and get a broader um, interest on, on bamboo and what can be done with bamboo. And regarding this, um, well, there are some major differences, right? Thinking on, on like the European take on bamboo design structure um, and compared, for example, to the Asian um, um, design, which um, are like two different universes, uh, even if both are structures uh, and houses or whatever they are, but it's, it's super different, right? Exactly. I mean, there is, we've been blessed. I mean, the world has been blessed to have been, you know, that we have received some of these incredible structures that were built in Indonesia, in Southeast Asia, in South America, um, which kind of pushed the boundaries in terms of what you perceive as a human being, uh, the aesthetics of it. Obviously, we are very kind of trained. Well, I'm speaking from a very European or kind of Western, Westernized thinking. Um, so we, we look at houses as kind of these square blocks or even skyscrapers and apartment buildings and whatsoever. So that's what I grew up with. And that's what I kind of perceive as normal. And then when you see structures built of bamboo that achieve, you know, incredible organic shapes and, and a flow within a structure, a design language that, you know, we're not used to, um, it speaks to you very differently as a human. And that's my opinion. I mean, obviously, we're all a little bit different. But to me, it has always been very fascinating to see this and see how your body reacts to it, and even how you feel in a space. Um, and bamboo is a great material for that because it it has the ability to be processed and you know become a very kind of flexible and and beautiful material that encompasses all of this but it's also in and itself it's a very beautiful material in the right setting um and so we can reference ibuku there that these structures are you know multi-story villas the green school is a it's an incredible space for kids to go to school in an open classroom uh, there are no real walls and and, and it's all you're in nature and you're immersed in it and so it, it's just a it's a different concept and it's obviously possible because of the climate but it's also just it pushes the boundaries and to me that was a very eye-opening moment and like you said for people that have kind of grown up in a city or or where it's kind of normal to have kind of square structures this is very new and very different I grew up in the forest, so I was always out and about as a kid. So you were, I was immersed in, in nature. And obviously, there's there is a lot of organic shapes and stuff. But once you live in a space like that, it, it, it brings you back to childhood and it brings you back into that kind of nature feel. Um, so going into kind of the differences between those, I think there's three major factors that make this possible, what has been what has happened in let's say Southeast Asia or, you know, parts where these structures have kind of pushed these boundaries. Mm -hmm. And one of them is obviously they have the right bamboo. I mean, that is the big difference. Uh, in Europe, we have bamboo, but we don't have that kind of perfect bamboo. I mean, I hate that term, the perfect bamboo, because every bamboo has its abilities. And in my opinion, designing and building with the bamboo that's closest to you and that you have available is is most of the time the best the best solution makes sense uh, right <laughs> i mean logical. to me it makes sense yes i mean yeah. from a sustainability factor yeah. but also just from that bamboo is used to the climate that you're in um so southeast asia has fantastic bamboo there's some of you know the greatest bamboo in terms of size i mean they have massive bamboo asper um, obviously, Colombia has Guadua, and then there's some other species that kind of, you know, fit perfectly to a, to a purpose that you use in a structure. So you have like big, massive beams that hold up the structure, then you have smaller kind of bamboo that, you know, can be used for supportive purposes, rafters, purlins, and, and then obviously flooring joists and stuff like that. And then you have even smaller stuff that's more decorative, and, and, and then obviously going into furniture, and kind of processing the bamboo, you have so many abilities to do stuff. And so that that is one of the most underlying things. You, if you have the right bamboo, you can push the yeah. bamboo into a lot into a lot more things that you would potentially want to do. Um, the second is also since you have the bamboo, you have the right climate, right? So you have mm -hmm. that climate where it works. 
where you can build an open structure with no walls and you're not going to freeze. You're going to figure out airflow and all that. You stay cool during the summer. But in Europe, we have winters and we have snow load. So yeah. considering Different. a structure made of bamboo and having, you know, one, two, three meters of snow on top of it in the winters, that that's a very different concept of engineering for a bamboo structure. Mm -hmm. And that is probably one of the driving factors that keeps us from doing more stuff with bamboo in the US, in Europe, in colder countries, because it's it's difficult to implement bamboo into the building code because it is such a vast, it has so many varieties of species. And, it, 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 you know, there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. So that is a big driver why we're not be able to to do stuff. And Obviously, it's, a new, it's a new mindset, right? I mean, Europeans don't have or don't didn't have bamboo as, as raw material. So the, the whole thinking and comparing and everything is always based to existing materials such as wood, um, right. um metal or whatever other materials they they, they know they had right the last hundred Correct. or 500 years and yeah th that's also something interesting because once we stop comparing bamboo and start using bamboo as as bamboo we will probably build very differently than what we're right. building today yes absolutely i mean it, the kind of work i do I do mostly, or what I prefer to do is building with the whole pole, right? The Entire, full pole construction, yeah, yeah. we call it. There is obviously other methods of doing stuff with bamboo, which is, you know, you can crush the fibers, you can laminate it, you can make uh, engineered products, engineered beams. And that is something that is, it, you know, there's a lot of research being done and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And you will probably see those materials slide into the more commercialized market because, that is what we're used to. We're used to exactly. standardized materials. If it's a two by four, if it is a certain size of lumber that is being sold in Europe, if it's um, plywood that is comes in certain sizes. I mean, the market is made for it. The structural systems are made for it. All these systems, it, they go hand in hand. And there's a reason for it. It makes it more efficient. It makes it cheaper. It makes it more applicable for, for most people. Um, now, bamboo can take a role in that by being engineered. Bamboo can also take a role in it by being used as a full pole material, but obviously that comes with a lot more customization, you know, re, re, rethinking that process of how do we, how do we use a, pro, a material that is so inconsistent? Mm -hmm. How do we either make it consistent or how do we find a way to figure out a way how that works? You know, or mixing I, it, I, right? Mixing other... it works. Correct. Yeah. It, it, I don't know the solution. I simply... The way I like to phrase it is that if you consider using bamboo as a full pole or even as an in its natural stage, let's say, mm -hmm. it will it will take more customization. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. to me as a craftsman, since my craft is an outdying craft, if I look at the area I'm from in the south of Germany, right. carpenters, furniture makers, that is not a desired industry anymore. It used to be. It used to be a very highly seen craft where, where people would want to learn that craft and obviously hand that down generations, down the future generation and so on. Mm -hmm. Now we're struggling to find carpenters in the area. Yeah. And it, it is one, I mean, there's a lot of woodwork here and we, there's a rich knowledge on wood, but it there it's still a struggle. And so as a craftsman, to me, that customization aspect is what makes it human. Mm -hmm. And it is what makes it beautiful. And that is why I enjoy working with bamboo because it requires me to constantly think and work with my hands and nothing is the same. Sure, yeah. it doesn't make my life sometimes easier because these builds can take a long time. It is not as easy to teach people something that is standardized and so on. But if we think about that ev evolution, like we're going to lose a lot of hands-on, especially craft, you know, mm -hmm. oriented industries. And so to me, bamboo still has that beauty. I mean, there's a lot of other things where people still appreciate that. But with bamboo, it helps me kind of drive that. You know, mm -hmm. if I tell a client, look, you can go with this method, you can go with this, me this method, you can go with a more standardized method. It ultimately all comes down to a cost question because <laughs> you have to pay for a craftsman to customize more in a bamboo structure. And bamboo may be cheap. It depends on where you are. Absolutely. Bamboo can be very cheap. It obviously gets more expensive since it has to be treated and then transported. Um, it is still, that process alone is very labor intensive. 
it's not a machine that drives into a forest and pulls out bamboo poles. No, it still has to be done manually because you have to understand bamboo, right? Mm -hmm. You have to understand how it grows. So the farmers are involved. And then it trickles down into everything up to the finished construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's um that's a good point. The customization, um, which um at the end you get a more unique result with bamboo. So that's absolutely uh, that's something to consider. Um and um what do you think? How do you do you, do you um see the future with bamboo? What would be like two or three things you think are gonna change or gonna improve? Uh, what's your take there? You being bamboo professional, like fully emerged in that world universe. Where I mean, are we in five, ten years with bamboo? That's a good question. I can only reflect to the last ten years, but I think what I would like to see and what I hope to see is that there is bamboo being considered in more applications mm -hmm. obviously pushing it further into maybe the western world the european world you know kind of trying to see how can we get away from this constant standardization thinking so just me now being stationed or, or based in the u.s i still travel a good bit for you know meeting these or going to different projects around the globe but being based in the u.s and seeing the fascination there and you know seeing a few projects here and there pop up that gives me a lot of hope that even a very standardized industry like the US and, you know, building codes there are, have to be standardized. And obviously you have to, you know, fit within that. And there are certain restrictions you have and so on, but even just kind of pushing the boundaries and it doesn't need, even need to push straight away into a permanent construction. You know, it can just be the awareness of bamboo. We're building an art project out of bamboo, which was originally done out of, out of steel pipes right to yeah. achieve a certain shape and then the client decides to go with a more organic and natural material so bamboo can take that role so mm -hmm. seeing that and taking advantage of that and obviously educating people on what is bamboo where can it be found what can you do with it you see people constantly react hey i have the stuff in my backyard it just grows like crazy i don't know what to do with it and then giving them these solutions, even if they're small carports, even if they're small sheds, even if they're using, if they're replacing any other material, then if they, let's say it this way, if they replace a material with bamboo, in my opinion, that is already, in a, it's already a way forward, right? Yeah. And with that, the more you do, the more research you have, the more good feedback you have and learning curves you have, the more you can do. So that is how I can see the, 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 the Western or European world kind of adapting to it, if we're talking kind of very specifically about Europe. Mm -hmm. But then I also see that there's a, going to be a lot of push in in um, the countries that are already doing a lot with bamboo. I think we're just continue pushing boundaries. I think there will be continued effort to understand the material more and, and applying it in a more, um, not sure what the right term is, maybe in a more academic way where you know, you use numbers and you do engineering and calculations. And then I think there's also an interesting route of where technology jumps in and helps us achieve these kind of issues. You can scan bamboo, you can use AI to kind of create stuff. You can use, um, you can use technologies that just you wouldn't have thought of because bamboo can kind of be put into a system and then help you, you can, you can design stuff with that. So I think there's a, there's a lot of different kind of approaches on what can be done with bamboo and to me i just hope that more people will continue doing stuff with bamboo and that there is a continued craftsman involvement in in bamboo because i'm a craftsman and i i highly think that we still need that as humans <laughs> absolutely absolutely and it has been growing the last years like crazy i mean from the initial bamboo projects which uh before ubuku and and the bali movement uh to what we have today it's like very much evolved um i mean back then it was not bad either but um it was very that was really limited to, compared to what we have today and uh and that's only right now i mean if we think the the bamboo age um like before the stone age it was like the bamboo age <laughs> where we're thinking like uh, bamboo has always been around in where the material is. Absolutely. So probably not in Europe, but uh, 
all the other continents and bamboo was around and just kind of got replaced and forgotten by other um things which possibly fitted better in that time and now we're like rediscovering it again and and i mean it's sure. it's beautiful absolutely it all started with you know understanding how to treat bamboo which is an important aspect of it and it's still a huge component of my work you know making sure the bamboo is treated and obviously in a way preserved that you can maintain a bamboo structure for 50 100 hundreds of years if you maintain it well yeah. um but then if it has yeah. a roof if it, no has water, a roof, right? it has some <laughs> boots, right? There's some of yeah. these, these general principles, which exactly. are very crucial. And this is, again, goes back to understanding the material. But then it's also, and this goes kind of back to understanding the traditional side of bamboo. Like you said, we've had it for thousands of years, but the, the knowledge has kind of been lost because, mm -hmm. again, crafts die out there, you know, especially bamboo crafts and construction crafts and so on. And so that knowledge hasn't been passed on for generations so you really have to dig and find the knowledge that's still around and that is it's a very sad part of that because we probably had some in incredible techniques probably you know, yeah that <laughs> we could use now <laughs> absolutely yeah. like just understanding you know science and earth and how, how look, all that works you can now rediscover those techniques exactly. and uh claim that uh, you discovered it because the knowledge sure. was was uh, lost so it's <laughs> I mean, kind of cool it's a, there's a, there's a bright future ahead absolutely yeah. and and i think us as the bamboo community we are very tight and we're we're close and uh, that's a beautiful thing as well everywhere you go and you have people that do stuff with bamboo you're talk constant and, you're yeah. constantly welcomed you're instantly being appreciated and it's more of a it's more of a sharing base so you know again there is no master it, it's yeah. it's simply just us being humans and it's and evolving kind of, correct and, and that's evolving. another thing i just wanted to quickly throw in uh you have that or you're working with bamboo leaf tea i think regarding a current future project ongoing project we have like two yes. minutes left so if you want to sure. give some info there sure. i mean it's it's my project that i took on a few months ago and it's my first big project in the U.S. It's in Indiana, Columbus, and we're mm -hmm. building a. It's it's considered a big art project. Uh, it's going to be up for three to four months, from mm -hmm. August till December. Um, that's four months. So, it's kind of the first push of a big installation. It's almost a structure since it has columns and beams, and it's kind of more like a a crescent crescent moon shape. Mm -hmm. Um. And we will be posting a bunch of stuff on the socials and uh, kind of share the process. If people are around and in Indiana, in Columbus, uh, we're kind of doing, it's an open workshop and we're looking cool. for people so they that want to help. They can join. They can help I'll be there. I'll be cool. there. They'll be able to work with tools and, and do stuff. Um, and it's kind of, I, I mean, from my research, it's a pretty big project in the U.S. I don't know if anybody has done the bigger one um and it's just exciting to me it is just simply an excitement because seeing that kind of bamboo and it's all local bamboo from the u.s so wow um, that bamboo being used there for a project like this is just exciting to me so um i hope you know it's going to be a success i have uh, i'm currently in europe i'm flying over there next week and we'll get it's right all, to it. you got all that bamboo from indiana or is it like somewhere in the u.s or... It's uh kind of pieced together, but most of it is from Georgia. Um, they do have a good amount of bamboo in that region. Um, so that's pretty it's cool. Still local, that's very that's close to cool. Indiana. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting. So we'll be, we'll be we'll be sharing stuff, and obviously, if people are around, come and join. Just hook Fantastic. up. Fantastic. Just send me an email. Send me an email, and I'll I'll make sure to send some more information. I'll share the your website on the on the blog post so uh, that will be there and uh, people will be able to uh, go there hopefully and you'll be Excellent. able to uh, make a lot of updates. Well, Vince, time is running. Um, uh, thank you very much for for being here, taking your time, and uh, I hope you continue building lots of bamboo structure, amazing structures, and um, talk to you soon again. Hopefully, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.